Can you integrate simulation automation and systems engineering? Let's talk about that next with Phoenix Integrations Model Center. All right, so let's talk about the integration between systems engineering and simulation automation. But first, uh, we do a lot of reviews, Lifecycle Insights. We do a lot of re uh, reviews of different solutions like this. Uh, to get more of those and actually insight into our research, uh, just subscribe or follow to get those updates. Um, now, this, this review actually ties into a series that we're running right now, uh, which looks at, uh, it's a four part series looking at how do you realize value from simulation driven design. And, and one of those is to use uh, simulation automation for engineers and also for simulation analysts. Uh, so this ties in directly. So Phoenix Integration is a solution provider. Uh, the solution is Model Center. Um, and let's take a quick look at kind of what capabilities it provides. Let's walk through that. Okay, so here's how it works. Basically, you define uh, a string of things that you want to have happen. So for example, if we had a, a 3D model and we want to take that geometry and feed it uh, to a structural simulation, but also you want to take some measurements off of it and feed that into a spreadsheet that does some fatigue calculations. This is part of what the automation tools within Model Center does. You can kind of define these things as a black box. You can get an output of one of them, in this case, a measurement, uh, parametric values off of a 3D model to feed to the simulate, I'm sorry, the spreadsheet as well as the geometry to feed to the simulation. Um, and you can string a whole number of those things together. So in this case, you know, we're looking at fatigue life, uh, we're looking at structural simulation, but then following up with that, uh, you could feed the structural deformations uh, from that analysis to a fluid dynamics simulation. Uh, and then you would wanna tabulate that all together. Uh, so, and that would track uh, what were the results out of those analyses and calculations. Now this gets interesting when you can kind of genericize the inputs, right? You can say, okay, here are the variable design variables at a high level uh, that will feed into that 3D model and then kind of cascade all the way down through the rest of these things. So um, at a basic level, this is, this is what capability it provides. All right, so let's stop there and talk about this for a minute. Um, so this automation, uh, simulation automation, provides a number of advantages. Basically, you can automate the whole sequence of events. It eliminates a lot of manual tasks to get the results of one thing into another. Um, and it can really shorten the time it takes to kind of run that whole simulation process from end to end. Uh, but then you can automate it, you can perturbate it, you can change the input design variables and see what outcomes uh, that has on performance. So that in and of itself or by itself uh, is beneficial and advantageous. There are some additional capabilities that are really interesting though. It's not just about manually changing design variables and uh, seeing what effect they have on the outcome, although that's super helpful. The kind of next step here is to connect uh, this with kind of a design exploration capabilities. Whether that is uh, a sensitivity study where you're progressively going through a series of changes of, to the design variables, uh, an optimization uh, routine, uh, a Monte Carlo kind of simulation which varies the design variables uh, so you have more complete coverage of the design space. Uh, those are all things that can be done uh, as part, well, within Model Center. And what that gets you, it, it gives you kind of these plots that let you look at, okay, what's the, what's the performance boundary uh, as I change design variables? What, where is like the best performing one? Uh, the worst performing one, but also the boundary of performance. So you can better understand uh, what's going on uh, and uh, kind of the limits of innovation within uh, the design. Okay, so let's take a second to talk about that kind of 
automated exploration of the design space. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to be used in every case, um, but for highly engineered components or aspects of your products, things that maybe carry the majority of the weight or cost, um, it can make a big difference. Uh, so this, this kind of design exploration can make a huge difference uh, in making sure you hit your requirements, uh, lowering costs, uh, and frankly, the automation can help you do that on shorter schedules. You know, if you're, if you're faced with a set of really aggressive design requirements, it might take you a long time to find a feasible design. Well, with this capability, it really shortens the time needed to do that. Now, where this really gets interesting and unusual uh, is when you connect it in with a model-based system engineering definition. Uh, there's a, a number of different tools out there that provides this capability. Uh, but basically what happens is uh, you can pass the variables that you have defined in your MBSE model uh, into this loop. Uh, and you can run it uh, with using those design inputs uh, as, at the beginning of your simulation automation. Uh, and then you can kind of track uh, the results against that uh, simulation. So there's this two-way integration. So first off, the MBSE model passes the design variables to Model Center, uh, and then Model Center will pass the results uh, back up to the MBSE model. So w what's interesting about this is that, uh, of course, there's, there's kind of like this configuration that you have of the product for the system uh, within the MBSE model. And then you get the results of how that configuration performed against the requirements that are very explicitly defined in the MBSE, in MBSE model. Uh, so it kind of closes the loop here, it kind of uh, not only allows uh, you know, efficiency in terms of uh, getting information from the MBSE model over the simulation, uh, but also you can you can track uh, how each configuration performed. And you can imagine if you automate this, especially with design exploration capabilities, you can cover a lot of different, you can perform a trace study uh, for the system. You can really understand what affects what. All right, so what are the takeaways here? Um, you know, there's some simulation automation uh, tools out there that are kind of like this. Model Center is a little bit unusual in that you have this drag and drop UI where you can develop these workflows or automations. Uh, but the integration with MBSC tools is unusual. I haven't seen that anywhere else as of yet. Um, and kind of closing the loop between these, um, kind of getting simulation running alongside the MBSC model definition, uh, there is a big advantage there, um, especially with the automation of passing the design variables over, getting those validated or seeing how they perform and kind of tracking that back and have results alongside the configuration of the system. Uh, that's big, especially with um, the automation involved. So this is, this is a really powerful tool set. If you have M MBSE stuff in place, uh, if you're exploring more and more simulation around that, then this could be a really powerful tool to kind of add in to close the gap between those two sets of capabilities. That's it. Take care and talk soon. To get more guidance on technology-led initiatives uh, and more insight on solutions, make sure to subscribe or follow. And that would include the four-part series on realizing value from simulation-driven design.